be discussing the question, what are the signs of BDD, which is like we discussed earlier, is a clinical manifestation and it's a clinical term that is used in psychology. So thoughts? Um, I would say, Alakia had mentioned this, I believe yesterday, um, but constantly fixating and thinking about one of maybe your features or um, something that you perceive as, as a flaw. There is um, basically this method that psychologists use to help their yeah. patients where they have them count the number of times a day where they're yeah. thinking about something. And that yeah. way patients can actually physically see numerically mm-hmm. how often they're thinking about it and then realize that it is a problem. And so, um, you know, if you're counting the number of times that you're thinking about this flaw or feature a day, um, and it adds up to like, you know, over 200 times, then that signifies that there is something that might be, I guess, an issue or something that you're struggling with um, and maybe like a reason to seek help. Wait, wait, wait. Did you just say 200? I, I was yeah. thinking around the range of like you know, 20 or 30. And I was thinking I like 200 is, is a low number. I would I say, like a lot more. Yeah. you know, I don't know for sure, but I think people with body dysmorphia um, do like, it does end up being in the hundreds when the amount of times they think about something a day, at least like in my abnormal psych class. Um, I think one of, uh, or my teacher who was a psychologist was talking about one of her patients who had like her number in the 2000s. Um, and so, you know, it definitely is very debilitating. And so um, we should maybe look into to how, you know, what the average number of times that people think of this flaw is in a day. But, um, Overall, you know, I don't know if those numbers have been really solidified. Uh, so definitely like more research has to be done on this topic. I can share about some general signs that, you know, you might see from yourself or other people in more day-to-day settings. So people might follow unusual routines to avoid social contact that exposes the perceived flaw. So whatever it is that they're worried about, they might do things to Um, avoid other people seeing that or interacting with that part of them. Um, If you, no matter how much you reassure them that there is no flaw, if they say something like, I have a horse face or I look ugly and they say things like that and you might reassure them that, you know, that's not true. You don't look like that. You you look great. You look perfect. Um, They can't accept that the issue does not exist. If you see repeated, um, like vehement denial, just like Kanika mentioned in the previous video, you know, they might not be aware that this is actually a problem. So they might not be aware that this is not the case and they'll be denying you. Um, they might attempt to hide it with styling, makeup. Um, they might look to cosmetic surgery as a way to solve the um, perceived flaw, uh, often comparing themselves with others. You know, extreme preoccupation with it, with their, um, with their perceived flaw can also lead to um, interference in social life. You know, they might, for people who like to control their eating habits, because that is an associated part with BDD sometimes that, or they need to um, work out excessively. They might say, I don't want to go to this party with you because I don't want to miss my workout. So you can interfere with social, social life, your work, school, and other things that you do in your life. And sometimes it can lead to agoraphobia, which is, you know, fear of crowds. And it's to the point where, you know, you feel so um, flawed in your appearance that you just don't want to be in, with other people, period. So these are some of the signs that you might notice in yourself or others in a more day-to-day setting. You guys make some very good points. And uh, <clears throat> uh, what I would like to add is, you know, one of the things I actually saw in like an article uh, uh, like two months ago or something, and it was actually not about BDD, but, you know, when I in the start of the article, I thought it, would re- it really was because... Uh, the title like was a clickbait title, so you know, it didn't really get much from the title. Uh, so the title was about uh, how uh, you know in a relationship, a boyfriend and a girlfriend, and then the girlfriends uh, wouldn't send a selfie just like that because you know and, uh, they need to like put on the makeup, you know, like uh, take like a hundred selfies, pick which one is they think you know like, the best angle and everything, and sometimes even that doesn't work. And uh, and then I thought uh, like from there they're, they're gonna step into. Hey, this could be body dysmorphia. Whereas you know, it went into you know, like, uh, the the boyfriend was very, very insensitive because you, they shouldn't be asking for photos like this, which is also true in the sense that you know, like you don't deserve to get photos just because you're a boyfriend. But at the same time, uh, I thought it was a great creation of our address that you know, 
like if the girl had not sent the photo is because she didn't want to that's a different thing than uh, her thinking she couldn't do it because uh, of a flaw that she has so even uh, like it's not just you who might not uh, who might uh, you know not know about bdd like might be like a bit insensitive even if the general public with like random articles could be telling you that uh you know they may not have the information about bdd and they may still be writing articles which uh, i'm i'm not uh, against them because you know like uh, we're all being the we all can write so uh, but you know like uh, it's just that uh, you can get anecdotal experience that can also reinforce uh, the wrong messages you know now that we've spoken about some of the ways that you know we've talked about the prevalence that affects 2 to 2.5% of the population here are some signs that people have you know what leads to developing uh, BDD, what leads to that? Okay, we, we can talk with that tomorrow. Okay, sounds good. See you all then. Oh, you're still here? Well, thanks for getting to the end of the video. Hey, while you're still here, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get new updates when we post videos. Also, make sure to check out these equally exciting videos as well. Have you pressed it yet? Come on, you have five seconds left. Three, two, press it now.